aim settings. Something you probably have heard of and probably have seen before. But what the hell is going on here? So this goes way back into 2022 when Critical Ops... God, way back in 2022? Man, time is flying. Anyways, back in 2022 or whenever Critical Ops did this, they decided to revamp the whole settings menu to try and make all of the settings easy to understand, or to us veterans of CEOPS, easier to understand. And with that came some new options that we have never had before. So I plan on tackling the most difficult settings menu that most of you watching this video have been begging me to make for so long now, the control settings. So make sure you are paying attention because I'm not going to repeat everything. Or you can rewatch the whole video to help the algorithm push the video to the masses, because God knows I need it, right? So without further ado, here is the control settings. Okay, so to get to your settings, you are going to need to tap this gear icon in the top right next to your music mute button. Once you do, you are greeted with the general settings tab, which we are not covering today, so you're going to want to tap the controls tab. Ah, that's much better. This is where all of your aiming settings are located, as well as your input methods and your button layout and movement settings. To select your input method, tap any one of the three options at the top that change the type of input method you want to use. We are not going to be worrying about mouse and keyboard or gamepad controls right now. We are going to focus strictly on touch controls, mainly because I don't use any other input methods and I don't plan on using any other methods anytime soon. Next, we have the edit touch controls and dynamic movement pad settings. While not having a direct impact on your aim, it would be a good idea to move the buttons around to make it more comfortable to reach them rather than using the default button layout. The way you would want to set up your button layout is by going through the actions you want to perform during your games. For example, if you want to jump while moving around, move the jump button so it is opposite of your movement pad. If you want to learn how to quick scope, then put your aim button opposite of your fire button. And if you have an IQ over 100, you can begin to see a pattern emerging. Basically, any action you want to perform requires the use of two different fingers. If you are playing with your thumbs, you will almost always want to have your primary action, like moving, opposite of your secondary action, like jumping. If you're playing with three or more fingers, it will depend on which fingers you are using, but you will almost always need two different fingers for your actions. And then there is dynamic movement pad, which just changes the movement button location to where you tap. And if that sounded familiar, that is exactly what it says in the setting description. The setting descriptions will say exactly what the setting does, so paying attention to them will give you an understanding of what it does. Having this turned on will change the location of the movement pad, and having this turned off will keep the movement pad in a static position. The only gripe I have about the dynamic movement pad is that it can mess with your muscle memory. But if you want to try it out, there really is no harm in doing so. And now it's time for the aim settings. These dictate how fast or how slow your aim is in the game and could be the source of most of your problems. It looks like there is a lot, but it's just three different settings with two settings for the horizontal aim, left and right, and the vertical aim, up and down. Enemy assisted tracking is just aim assist, which helps you keep your crosshair on an enemy for longer, except it is almost non-existent with touch controls and is a borderline aimbot with the controller input method. Regardless, it is still a good setting to have on at 100%, and for anyone who says it hurts your aim, prove it. I have yet to see a video on aim assist saying it hurts your aim in any way. So if you want to make a video about that, then what better way to start your YouTube career than making a statement that defies expectations? Anyways, on to the aim sensitivity. This is the baseline sensitivity for all weapons, including the scoped weapons while unscoped. The lower the number, the slower your aim will be, and the higher the number, the faster your aim will be. The fastest way to find your sensitivity is to set your sensitivity right in the middle at 5, then play a game of deathmatch and see how it feels. If 5 feels too fast, then set your sensitivity to 2 and play another game. If 5 feels too slow, then set your sensitivity to 9 and play another game. You'll want to keep bouncing back and forth like this at 0.5 intervals until you have dialed in your sensitivity. For example, let's say that a 5 sensitivity is too fast, so then you would set your sensitivity down at 2 which should feel slower. If it is slow, you would then set your sensitivity up to 4.5, going down by 0.5 intervals. If this feels too fast, then set your sensitivity back down to 2.5, going up by 0.5 intervals. Then you will move on to 4, and then 3, then 3.5 right in the middle. If you really want to dial in your sensitivity, then use 0.05 intervals, which is possible. You just got to be very patient. 
You know, now that I'm thinking about it, you could just use the 0.5 intervals until you get to neighboring numbers, then use the 0.05 intervals to really dial in your sensitivity. Now, this is just an example sensitivity. You may not find the sensitivity to be very good if you prefer higher sensitivities. Some of you might find that 3.5 is still a little too slow, and you want something just a little bit faster. Still, this is much easier to wrap your head around than trying to do my original method for finding your perfect sensitivity. And to anyone who knows what I'm talking about, you are a true OG fan. Now onto the scope sensitivity, which dictates how fast your aim is while scoped in on a scoped weapon. There are two scope sensitivity settings, one for the scoped assault rifles and one for the sniper rifles. You will notice that the values here are percentages. That means this setting is based off of your aim sensitivity I discussed like 15 seconds ago. Now one thing that is important to remember is that a sniper scope is not the same as a assault rifle scope. The sniper scope is at a 2 times zoom while the assault rifle scope is at a 1.5 times zoom. Meaning, if you set both of these sensitivity values to the same number, it will result in a different speed. And to find your scope sensitivity, you just divide your base sensitivity by the zoom of the scope. So for me, my sensitivity is a 4, and dividing it by 2 and 1.5 respectively gives you 2 and 2.67. So in short, your scope sensitivity is based on your sensitivity divided by the zoom of the scope times the percentage of your scope sensitivity. So my true scope sensitivity for snipers is 1.9 and for assault rifle scopes is 2.54. But stop! Why do you have low sensitivities for your scoped weapons? Don't you want them higher so you can flick faster? No. Why? Because they're scoped weapons. These weapons were designed to be more accurate at long ranges, hence the scope. So it would make sense to lower your chances of overshooting your target by lowering your sensitivity. And you don't need to flick with these scoped weapons. As long as you're holding an angle you know an enemy is going to peek from, then you should be fine. So that's why I have both of mine set to 95% and not something like 120%. That's ludicrous! Now it's time for the more technical part of the video, the advanced aim settings. These settings are for those players who want just a little bit more control over how their controls work. This setting is off by default, but by turning it on, you are greeted to a whole bunch of different settings. Some of these settings also have more hitting settings behind them. Kind of like Inception, and if you get that reference, you're either old, know the reference, or have a good taste in movies. Now, if you've been paying attention in the first two sections, you will be able to follow along as this section has a lot of different settings and the script is getting too long, so here we go. Starting from the top, we have extra aim. This is aim acceleration, which is a setting that I have preached to keep turned off at all times, as this will mess up with your aim aiming consistency. The rate of aim acceleration goes up at a curve, which is not as consistent as linear aim acceleration. And unfortunately, there is no option to change this, unlike in the gamepad settings where this is available. And if any devs are watching this video, please make it so that the default is linear or gives the option to switch for touch controls. Up next, we have activate default shoot joystick. This changes your shoot button into a joystick so you can aim with your shoot button. Turning this on will open up the sensitivity settings for the shoot joystick, which are shown as percentage values. The first set is a percentage of your base sensitivity, so setting this to 100% will give you your full sensitivity. Any higher and it's going to be faster, obviously. The sniper scope and the assault rifle scope sensitivities are the same as before, so set them to the same value to stay consistent. Next is the activate secondary shoot button. This lets you activate an additional shoot button just in case you need it for any reason. Turning this on will give you the option to turn this extra shoot button into a joystick, just like your default shoot button. So all of the settings for the default shoot joystick also apply to the extra shoot joystick. This can only be accessed by activating the extra shoot joystick setting. Next we have the activate aim joystick, which turns your aim button into a joystick just like the shoot buttons. This one has a little more settings than the rest, so let me explain. Turning this on will open the joystick sensitivity settings, which is the same as the scope sensitivity settings we have gone over. There are also two extra settings called release to shoot. Once you let go of the aim button, snipers will shoot one shot, and assault rifles will shoot three round bursts. Again, I'm just explaining what each setting does. I'm not telling you not to use these settings. You can use them if you would like. Up next, we have invert touch controls, which means up is down and left is right. The only practical thing I could see this being used for is to turn all of them on so that way you can one for one copy the recoil pattern for each assault rifle. Using this for anything else is just unintuitive. Unless you want to give it a go yourself, then by all means, give it a try. Let me know how that goes in the comments. Buttons block access input is 
pretty self-explanatory if you read the description of the setting. It prevents you from aiming when you are pressing buttons. This is a good setting to turn on if you are not using joystick aim, so that way you can be more precise when tap firing. Next, we have gyroscope controls. These settings allow you to use your device to aim. Kind of like a Wii Remote, if any of you know what a Wii Remote looks like, but you are playing the game on the controller itself. So a Switch would be more accurate? Anyways, I personally don't use gyro, but I have played around with it in the past, and gyro seems like it's more for your short flex and recoil control rather than using it for aiming in general. Which makes sense considering you still have access to your touch controls. I think the default gyro sensitivity is based off of your default sensitivity like before, but since it's better to use it for short flicks, I would go with a lower percentage, but keep your scoped weapon sensitivities the same. Lastly, we have reset to default, which when you press it, it will set everything back to default. Ah, damn it. All right, I gotta go redo my settings real quick. This might take a while, but while I do, feel free to check out these videos that YouTube is recommending you watch. And both of them better be my videos, or I swear to God, I will find where you live, tuck you in your bed, kiss you on the forehead goodnight, and go fuck your mom in the next room. They call me Stump Daddy for a reason.